Google Meet has undergone several changes over the last few months. In this video, we'll discuss those changes and how they affect the way you can communicate with your students. Depending on how long it's been since you've used Google Meet, you may have noticed that the location of some of the buttons has changed. Now, all of the buttons that control how you interact with your Meet are located in the bottom center of the screen. These are buttons like to mute and unmute your microphone, enable or disable your camera, to enable or disable closed captioning, raise or lower your hand, present your screen, more options, and finally to hang up or end the call. The buttons that allow you to interact with your students during a meet are now all located in the bottom right hand corner. These include your meeting details, the list of meet participants, your chat, your activities, and finally your host controls. Many of the new features that you'll find in Google Meet can be located by clicking the Activities tab in the bottom right hand corner. The activities that you have available to you are breakout rooms, polls, Q&A, recording, and whiteboarding. Whiteboarding allows you to create a new whiteboard or Jamboard that your students and you can use interactively. You can also choose to use one that you previously created from your Google Drive. Recording is only available to teachers, not to students, and it is not recommended to be used with students in the Meet. Q&A gives the ability for you to turn on a forum where students can post questions that you can answer during the Meet. Polls allows you to very quickly start a poll by asking multiple choice questions and having the students vote. The answers will be given back to you live. And finally, breakout rooms. This is a new feature that has been added to Google Meet for you to use with your students. It allows you to set up multiple breakout rooms from within your Google Meet and then organize them however you see fit. You can choose the number of rooms you want to create by clicking here. You can set a timer to automatically end the breakout rooms at a particular time, shuffle the students within them, or clear everybody out. The students will automatically be placed into the different rooms based on a random selection. If you want to make them more personalized, you can just click and drag the different students to the different rooms that you want them in for any particular activity. Once you're ready to begin, just click open rooms and the students will be prompted to join the particular breakout room that you've invited them to. Once they join, you will see on the screen that their names will appear in the breakout room that they have joined. You can join any breakout room you wish by clicking join. When you do so, it will exit the main room that you are in and join the breakout room that you have chosen. To move between the different breakout rooms, simply click the join button beside the room you would like to enter. This will exit you from the room you are currently in and bring you into the one you've just selected. This means you will never be in more than one Google Meet at a time. This significantly reduces the system resources required to run Google Meet on your computer. It should make Meet run a little bit more stable. When you are all done and you want to return to the main room, you can always click the Leave button for whichever room you are in. This will exit you out of that room and bring you back into the main room. Once in back in the main room, you have the option to close the rooms. Once you click it, you receive a prompt asking if you're sure you want to close all the breakout rooms. You'll be told that all the students will be asked to return to the main room within 30 seconds. If you're sure, click the close all rooms button and then each student will receive a countdown timer at the top of their Google Meet screen. They will also have a button that they can click to return to the main room. If they don't do so within the 30 second timer, they will be removed from that breakout room and left in sort of a waiting area until they click the return to the main call button and be brought back into the main room. They will not be able to stay in the breakout room once you have closed the rooms. Another new feature that was added was the mute all feature. This allows you to mute all the students in your mute all at the same time. To do this, click the participants list or the show everyone button. This shows a list of all the students and any other teachers that might be in this meet with you. To mute all the students at the same time, simply click the Mute All button. This will mute every student in the class, but leave the teachers unmuted if they'd like. 
If you would like to block them from being able to turn the microphone back on, click this checkbox off. This will block them from being able to re-enable their microphone. When you want them to be able to unmute, you can simply re-enable that, and then students can choose to unmute. There have also been a few upgrades made to the host control features. Host controls can be accessed by clicking the shield with the lock in it in the bottom right-hand corner of your Meet screen. This gives you several different options for how to control what your students can and cannot do during the Meet. You can enable or disable each of these options by clicking the check mark to either the off or on position. Things that you can control are things like the ability for them to share their screen, for them to be able to send messages in the chat, which even when it's disabled, teachers can still send messages in the chat, the ability to turn on and off their microphone, the ability for them to turn on and off their video, and quick access. It is important that quick access is always set to off to ensure that no one can enter your meet without you knowing about it, without you granting them access. As well, students and teachers both have a much larger selection of possible virtual backgrounds to choose from. To change your virtual background, simply click the three dots or more options from the bottom middle panel of buttons, and then choose Apply Visual Effects. When you do this, you'll see you have two options of how blurred your background can be, and then you have several different background options you can choose from. Some of them are still images, and some of them, with the little play button, actually have motion or are video. These are the same for both teachers and students, and can be selected and changed whenever you'd like. The last new feature that Google Meet has implemented recently is the ability for teachers to see more of their students rather than what they are presenting. So if you were presenting your screen, you click the Present Now button, and then you have these three options. It is always best if you're choosing anything with audio or video to choose a tab, but any of these three will work. Once you choose the tab you want to present, then usually it would take up a large portion of your screen showing what it is you are presenting and you lose access to a lot of what you see of your students' videos or cameras. This can now be reduced to the same size as one of your participant views. Simply click the unpin, the push pin button. This will shrink down what you are presenting to the same size as one of your participants. So now you'll still be able to see your students as well as what you're presenting, but it isn't taking up a good portion of your screen. One of the most significant changes that Google has made to Meet recently is in how it integrates with Google Classroom. Google has much more closely integrated those two platforms together, which offers a few new features, but also some new things that need to be considered. First of all, if you haven't already done so, you'll have to generate a bead link for your students to click. This is no longer found in the header, but in this little button down below the header of your Google Classroom. To create a Meet link, simply click Generate Link. This will create a regular Meet link for your classroom. You'll notice it's no longer a lookup code, which is what was used in the past. You can here toggle between whether it is visible or invisible to students, but this Meet link will be the link used by your students to join your Meet. If you have not used your Google Classroom since that update took place, you may be prompted here to update out-of-date or old Meet links in your Google Classrooms. It is recommended that you do this and click on Update All My Links. This will update all of the links in any classroom that you are a teacher without you having to go through each one individually. One of the benefits of having this integration in Google Classroom means that it uses your Google Classroom roster as a way of managing who can and cannot have access to your Meet. So if you click on the People tab in your Google Classroom, anyone who is designated as a teacher in your Google Classroom will have co-host privileges, which means they have all of the same rights and access that you have in your Google Meet. They can open and close the Meet, they can enable or disable cameras or microphones, uh, and they can start breakout rooms and polls. Anyone who is listed as a student in your Google Classroom is able to enter your classroom as if quick access is on. 
meaning they do not have to ask permission as long as the meet is open by one of the teachers of the classroom. They can access the classroom and the meet without requesting to join, no matter how you have quick access set. So even if you have quick access off, any student on your roster will be able to bypass that setting and join your classroom. The benefit of this is anyone who is not on your classroom roster will not be able to enter your meet without requesting permission first. Now, while having co-teachers in your classroom automatically have co-host privileges in your meet is very handy, unfortunately, those changes do not take place until the meet link is reset. So if I have a new teacher that I am adding to my classroom, let's say a supply teacher or a teacher that is new, um, if I add them as a teacher to the classroom, once they have accepted that invitation, I have to then go to my stream, I have to go to my meet, click the three dots, click manage, and then the little down arrow beside my meet link and choose reset. It'll ask me if I'm sure and I click reset. It will now make a new meet link for that classroom. Only after I have done that will the new teachers or new students have the privileges that they should have in my meet. It is also very important for homeroom teachers to reset their meet links after a supply teacher has been in your class. To do this, follow the same process of clicking the three dots and then manage, and then click the down arrow beside the link and then reset. It is important to do this before opening up your meet link to have your students join you in the morning. This will reset you as the organizer of that meeting and you will get the attendance emails following the meet. If you don't, the supply teacher may get those emails with your attendance until the meet link is reset. One of the biggest changes that has come from the integration with Google Meet and Google Classroom is the way students are handled if they are trying to join a meet where no teacher is present. Before, they would be told the meet link doesn't exist and that they could try again later. Now, when they click join now, they will be put into a waiting room. They will be told that they are waiting for the host to join and the meeting will start as soon as the host is joined. This is where they will stay until a teacher opens that meet link by joining themselves. When any of the teachers of that Google Classroom join the meet, it opens up the meet for all of the students to join as long as they are on that classroom roster. They will be able to join automatically as soon as that teacher joins. This process can look as if students were already in the meet before the teacher joined. It doesn't actually work that way though. These students were not here, they were in that waiting room until I opened up the meet. So while it might look like the students are in there before you, they are actually joining at the exact same time as you because they have been sitting in a waiting room waiting for the teacher to open the room. While the new updates to Google Meet have increased the safety and security of the program, it is important for teachers to remember a few things to make sure that both them and their students are safe. First of all, it is important to never admit an outside DDSB user into your Google Meet. It is possible for outside users to gain your Meet link and attempt to join. When somebody from outside the Durham District School Board attempts to join your Meet, they will need to request permission you will see a notification like this at the top of your screen that will say outside Durham District School Board. So this means someone from outside the DDSB is trying to join my classroom meet. Unless this has been prearranged between you and the student and or their parents, it is never advisable to admit someone from outside the DDSB. You should deny their entry, and then they will be told that they were denied entry to the meet. If they happen to try a second time, to join the meet, it will once again give you the same pop-up. However, once you have denied their entry twice, they will be barred from requesting access again. They won't be able to request access anymore and you won't get any more pop-ups from that particular address. The last thing to consider is how you are leaving the meet when you are done. When you are done with your meet, you click the leave call or the hang up button. You will be prompted to end this video call for everyone. You'll also see the current setting for quick access. It is advisable once again to always make sure quick access is set to the off position. Then you have these two ways that you can leave the call. Just leave the call would mean you leave the call but the rest of the participants remain in there. End the call means everyone in the meet will be automatically forced out of the meet as the call is ended. 
The only time you would choose just leave the call is if you are leaving another adult in charge of that classroom meet. If there is another teacher that has come into your classroom meet and they are teaching the next period or something and you want to leave but they are staying, then you can choose just leave the call. For every other scenario, you're going to want to choose, choose end the call. This will force all the students that are in the call out and there will be no students left in the call without teacher supervision. Once you see this screen that says you've ended the meeting for everyone, it means that you have successfully closed the meet and that all students have been removed. Because you are out and quick access was set to off, no students will be able to rejoin that meeting until you or another teacher from that classroom reopens it by joining it once again. This will ensure that students cannot join the meet when there are no teachers present. If you have any questions about Google Meet, Google Classroom, or any other digital tool or resource, please feel free to email us at innovative.education at ddsb.ca.